Hello, hello, my friends. I am here with an introduction to Python and IDLE, and this is um, mainly geared to the students in my classroom. Uh, but hey, if, if this can help you out as you get started with Python, how great is that? Um, I have idle open on my screen right here and you can see that little word idle and idle is a development environment that comes packaged with Python uh, and it's what I use in my classroom because it comes packaged with Python it requires no extra installs it's a one-stop shop super super easy for people to use and I like the clean um, background so that when I have it projected on my screen I can write over top of it in my classroom all right my friends I have Python 3.9 as a this video the most current version of Python is 3.10 point something and I just haven't found the need to upgrade it, this one does great for what I need in my classroom right now I have the shell open on my screen the shell is also called the REPL which stands for read evaluate print loop and what that means is that it's a place for me to write computer code and it will read my code. It will try to evaluate it if I've written something in Python. It will print out some feedback for me. In this case, it was an error. And then it loops and it waits for me to write my next line of code. And this is a wonderful little tool for us to be able to write small little snippets of code that I want to test out to see what happens when I do something like that in Python. But this is not where I'm actually going to write my programs that are all the exercises that I'm doing in my classroom because I can't, I'm trying to type, I can't go back and edit that and that's really not helpful. I want to be able to have a place where I can write code and edit it and then run it over and over again. So the way to do that is up here in my, my uh, menu options, I'm on a Mac as you can see, file, file new. So you're going to find that on your computer and poof, up pops a very, very simple, straightforward, plain editor. This is where I'm going to type my code and it has, you know, the smallest of little extras in there for me. And I'm typing my very first program, but this is where I'm going to be able to write code, save it and run it over and over and over again. I'm going to um, actually bring over a little program that I've got here and as you can see I can just keep adding lines of code to it and then I can go and erase lines of code that I don't want to have um, running at that time. When I'm ready to save and run my programs I have to save the file. So I'm going to go to file save and that'll go ahead and give me the option of saving that program somewhere on my screen. I've got a few exercise or a few files here. I'm going to call it hello world exercises and you'll see that the default is .py. Hopefully I can, well maybe can I scroll in here really super fast? Again, hello world exercises .py. and that is going to be the default for all of my Python files. So I'm going to go ahead and save that. Yeah, I'm just replacing something that I already had on my machine. When I want to run that code, so I've saved it, that means that I can go back and open this file up in the future and edit it and add more things to it. But when I want to run that code and see the results of it, I need to find the run menu option. When my shell is live, I have different menu options than when my code is live, when it's the active window in my, on my computer. So when my code is active, I'm looking for the menu option that says run, and then I'm picking run module. And what happens is my code starts to run. Python interpreter starts to read through all the lines of my code and execute them here in the shell or in the REPL. And over here in the REPL, it started to execute my program. There it is. It said, hello world. That's our very first computer science program we always write. And then I have a prompt. It says, enter your name. And I have a little flashy cursor because my program is waiting for me, the user now, to interact with it. So I'm going to go ahead and enter my name. That's my name. And then it says, hey. And it uses that information to print out some more things to me. So the shell is used for interacting with our programs to see the output and to provide some input 
And the code over here, these code editor files, are where I can um, uh, write code that I'm going to save and edit and run over and over again. I'm going to add another thing in here. I want to, um, my program should be really excited that I'm here and, and doing programming. So I, I'd like a number from the user. Um, I'm going to ask them just to enter a number. All right, and I'm going to use that input function. And I'm going to move my print statement. I'm going to print after I've asked them for that number. And I want to incorporate the exclamation mark into my program with however many times they've written that particular number. And uh, see that on the screen there. And I think, there we go. All right. Enter my name. And I'm going to enter the number. I'm going really big because it didn't give me any parameters. And I have an error message. This is the other thing that's going to come up in the shell for you. I did this purposely is that when something we've written in terms of our code doesn't work properly for how Python works, or maybe um, we've missed like a particular exclamation point or an apostrophe or a bracket or something, when we haven't written our code perfectly, we will get errors in our code. That's computer science. We have to be OK with that. And that error message gets printed out here, and it gives me some information. Um, it tells me that ah, I did something with multiplying a string, and I know what my, my problem is. This input function, or this input tool, whenever I get user information, it always comes in in a special kind of data type type is called a string. And I teach it, need to change it to be a number so that I can do some math with it there. I wanted to multiply my exclamation by however many values. So I've made an adjustment to my code. I've saved it. And now I get to run it again. This is the whole point of writing code in a file. So I'm running it again, interacting with my program over here in the REPL or the shell. Can't even spell my name right. There we go. I'm going to enter a number. I'm going for that 300 again. And then, whew. Hey, Aaron, and it's super excited for me, as I wanted it to be for me introducing myself to the world and to Python and getting my very first program to run. All right, my friends, looking forward to seeing you in the next video.